We're going to be talking about uh, why electric truck sales are accelerating quickly. And I'll be talking to Colin McCarricker from Bloomberg NEF. Colin, what's the general overview? You know, it wasn't that many years ago we thought that electric trucks were going to be a long time electrifying, but that hasn't turned out to be the case, has it? Yeah, electric trucks, there's, there's a lot going on. Um, and the big thing, as with all things around electric vehicles, is that batteries just keep getting better and they keep getting cheaper. And as they get better and cheaper, new opportunities for their deployment open up and new segments become competitive. And what we're seeing right now is that in the medium and heavy seg truck segment, um, some use cases are already economical. So places where you're doing regional uh, or, or urban duty cycles or whether you're using the truck very intensely or whether you have high gasoline or high diesel prices and low electricity prices, all those are starting to create niches where electric trucks can already compete today. Um, and that, as a result, you're seeing numbers, the numbers take off. So they're up about 140% in the first uh, half of this year. And there'll be about 4% of global heavy truck sales this year. That may, may not seem like a lot, but it it was essentially zero just a few years ago. Uh, a lot of that growth being driven by China, but also seeing rising adoption in, in parts of Europe as well. well. Let's talk about China because that's where a lot of the manufacturing is centered. Um, are we seeing Chinese medium and heavy duty manufacturers uh, take most of the market share in EVs? So it's, a, you mean, is it a mix of existing manufacturers and, and new ones or, or what do you mean? Yes. Uh, are we seeing um, the existing manufacturers electrify their models or is this primarily driven by China? So it's it's a mix. So within China, uh, it's all domestic brands that are, that are selling those those electric trucks. In international markets, it's still mostly the international truck makers. So uh, the the big names that you'd expect: Volvo, Daimler, um, Scania, these groups. Um, but I will say that what we have seen from the passenger car market is that you kind of need a challenger to to shake things up. And so what you have seen is BYD entering some markets with trucks, uh, a few others now starting to enter, and that catalyzing more competition and a little more urgency. So the Chinese have a, obviously uh, are playing a big role within their own country, uh, but are also starting to shake up competition outside of the, the country as well. The same thing essentially that's happened with passenger cars, but probably about five years behind the adoption curve that we've seen with, with passenger cars. I've done some interviews with fleet operators and they and these are Canadian ones and they strike me as being a lot more open to electric trucks than you might think. Yeah, I mean, this is an economics thing. If someone can say, look, the vehicle works and we put a warranty behind it and the economics work, fleet owners are are not dogmatic people. They're, they're, they're dollars and cents people. And what we've seen is that the truck makers are extending the warranties on their uh, electric trucks as they get more comfortable with operating conditions and residual values. So the highest one we found in, in surveying the market this year was 1.2 million kilometer warranty on the battery for a, a long haul electric truck. That's up from quite a, quite a bit from just what we saw a few years ago. And we saw a few models where they doubled the warranty period between sort of two or three years iterations of the model so that suggests just growing confidence in the in the technology and and also just kind of more knowledge base out there around things like performance charging battery deterioration and, and that sort of thing so i think that's why you see that from the fleet operators they're they're agnostic if someone can reliably deliver them a fleet that works and that costs that where the costs are competitive they will they will make that switch looking ahead to 2030 are we going to see battery innovations uh, like solid state uh, accelerate the sale of electric trucks? I think the bigger effect for trucks is still going to be the following cost rather than new technologies. So I think when we look at where do you get cost competitive electric trucks in all the different segments, um, long haul, heavy duty long haul included, the biggest factor is going is going to be around the um, the further reduction in battery prices. Interestingly, right now, what you see is there's sort of a two-tier market. There's prices for truck batteries within China, and then there's prices for truck batteries outside of China, and they're almost double what you see there. So we need a little more um, confluence of those, and, and you're starting to see more of the battery makers hunt for market share outside of China and really offer some lower prices than, than we've had in the past. That should start to bring down truck prices, which will open up new markets. Um, I, I think it's interesting to follow solid state and sodium ion, but my hunch is between now and 2020 or 2030, we're really just going to be talking about lower cost versions of existing lithium ion technology. What will uh, government regulations around uh, emission reduction, how will that affect the market? 
So emissions reduction regulations are playing a big role today. So China has tightening fuel economy regulations for trucks. Uh, the European Union does as well, though notably the European Union has, or, or the Commission rather, has, has relaxed targets for vans and, and cars recently. So they may relax truck targets, but they are a big driving force. If you think about, we talked about the fleet buyer there, that's the demand pull factor. Somebody saying, look, I want to implement these because I'm either serving consumers um, shipping products who, who are conscious of, of the green credentials of what they're shipping or because I just care about the economics and in this case it's competitive because we have high gasoline prices or high diesel prices in the market we're in. Those are the demand pull factors and the supply push factors that make the existing manufacturers go out, develop models, improve models, launch models. A big part of that is the fuel economy regulations. So those play a big role and actually the rollback of those in the US is also what we're, we're seeing that effect happen now and that's slowing down progress in the u.s for sure colin thank you very much for this thanks markham